Hey houseplay friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm gonna tell you about spent nodes and what on earth that even means. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you hit like and subscribe if you like this type of content. Maybe you've been binge watching my videos and you just forgot to hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the community. I also have YouTube memberships, which you can check out at the link in the description. You're almost to a hundred members. Come join the family if you're having a hard time making some houseplant friends. We are super great. It's not clicky. You'll be welcomed as soon as you join. But other than that, I think let's just get into this whole situation. So something that not a lot of people know about and I didn't know about until last winter was spent nodes. A spent node is a node that has already grown a shoot and then it's been cut back again. I learned about it when I was on a road trip with one of my friends and they were buying a plant and then they realized that after they purchased it that it was spent and I was like what the heck does that mean? And then they explained to me that it's when a plant grows a new shoot from a node and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. Cut it all the way off of the node at the very beginning. The auxiliary bud is gone because it's already been used and therefore it's spent. This made me really nervous because I didn't know about this and I've sold many a plant before. I was like, oh my gosh, have I ever sold something that I wasn't aware of was spent? Who knows? I still don't know the answer to that question. Yeah, I'm here to explain it to you so that you can be a better educated plant buyer and understand what the heck these things mean. So this right here is a spent node and I'm going to remove these leaves to give you a better picture of what that really means. This piece right here that runs along like this and here we have our new growth. Well, what was the new growth? It grew in from the auxiliary bud, which sits directly below the node. It grew in a whole new stem. I then cut the stem to propagate, but I cut the stem in the wrong spot. Well, I did it on purpose for this situation, but I would have then cut the stem in the wrong spot because now I've created a spent node. And that means that this node right here can no longer produce any growth. Obviously, mother nature is wild. Maybe sometimes you will get a spent node that will produce some growth for you but most of the time that won't happen. An issue that a lot of people have is that they'll buy, they'll buy one of these with the leaf on it. Like let's say it's a Monstera Albo because they're desperate and they really want an Albo. So let's say that this is an Albo leaf and you're looking at it and it has this like spent piece right here. People don't understand what a spent note is and so they'll buy it anyways, even though it's very clearly spent. I think that most of the time people are pretty good about not selling plants like this because it's super duper crummy and I feel like it's pretty easy to get caught if you're gonna just scam someone like that. Obviously there are people who don't understand or know um, so that is kind of a different situation. All of that is to say that spent nodes mean your plant like just won't grow. So you might end up dropping 400, 500, 800 dollars on a plant that won't ever grow. So um, just be really careful. And I only know about this with Monstera and Philodendron. So we're also going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of the node because I feel like this is really, really important. I feel like most of the time people don't know where the auxiliary bud is or they think that just because a plant has roots that it has a node and that's not true. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this awesome little graphic that my friend Chloe made. Her and my other friend Rihanna, I will link them both in the description if you want to check them out. They're super great about talking about the anatomy of the node and they've both made some really awesome infographics that will kind of help you understand everything about everything, to be honest. Uh, but this one that I'm about to show you is an infographic from my friend Chloe. And what you're gonna see here is a Monstera Albo node that has roots and petiole, a node and stem and an auxiliary bud. One thing you're not gonna see here is internodal spacing, but I will describe that in just a second. So basically you're seeing the auxiliary bud right there. That is where the new growth is going to come in Rump. So if you're buying a plant and you notice that it does not have an auxiliary bud, it could just be immature, so don't panic yet. But it is also extremely probable that it doesn't have an auxiliary bud, which is something that can happen. It's super, super unlikely, but always when you're taking cuttings, always check and make sure that your plants have an auxiliary bud because if they don't, it might not grow. So just make sure you double check that. And that is the only place 
space new growth will come from. New growth does not come from the node or the aerial roots. It literally only comes from the auxiliary bud. If you buy a node and there's no bud there, be careful. <laughs> also, a lot of people will be like, what they'll do is you'll get a teeny tiny little chunk and I'll kind of crop it here so you can see what I'm talking about. And it will literally just be a chunk of the node there. That might not have an auxiliary bud. The person might have cut the bud off to keep for themselves and just sold the literal node, which is useful for growing plants. So just, you know, make sure you're an educated plant buyer. Make sure you understand you're not just wanting the node, you want the entire anatomy. These aerial roots will also turn into water roots if they're taken of, if they're taken care of carefully. You'll see on this photo actually that they are already starting to turn into some water roots, which is just awesome. Then what you'll see is the stem. So the stem is just the overview name for that whole piece, like this whole whole line that contains the auxiliary bud and the node and then the internodal spacing which is the piece that is not the node that is all called the stem and then the petiole is usually what people call the stem and that is what connects directly to the leaf a lot of plants don't even have stem they just have petiole like alocasia they just have a petiole that connects to a tuber also alocasia cannot be propagated by petiole and leaf cuttings so if you didn't know that and you have some alocasia Asia tubers rooting in water. <laughs> really sorry to tell you, but those are not gonna create a new plant. Um, Alocasia and quite a few other plants can actually only propagate by division or other things like that that are a little bit more complicated. Division isn't complicated, but you do need to have a full grown plant in order to divide. This is the node anatomy and it's super duper important. And then here's another photo where it's gonna do a really good job showing you where the auxiliary bud is on an actual plant and then the internodal spacing between the nodes and the petioles. It's really, really important to note that, and again, I know I'm saying this a lot, you won't get new growth from a spot that is not the auxiliary bud. So make sure that whatever you're buying or propagating yourself has an auxiliary bud, otherwise you might be sad. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go over some plants that can only be propagated by either separation or division, node propagation, or leaf prop. And some of these are a little bit different and I'll explain them when I get to them. So basically how this chart works, right, is that we have these three concentric circles and the ones in the blue circle can be propagated by everything, separation, division, node, and leaf prop. The ones in the pink circle can only be propagated by node or separation and the ones in the green circle can only be propagated by separation. Plants that can be propagated in every type of propagation are ZZ plants, begonias, sansevieria, string of hearts, peperomia, kalanchoe, African violets, Escheveria and Crassula. Obviously, there's a lot of plants here that are not included. I'm just doing most of the common and uncommon houseplant varieties. But yes, all of those plants can be propagated down even by things that are just a leaf. Like you could literally just have a leaf and grow an entire new plant back from a ZZ, Begonia, Sansevieria, String of Hearts, Peperomia, Kalanchoe, African Violet, Escheveria, and Crassula. Plants that you can propagate by node or separate include Ficus, Hoya, Epipremnum, Pothos, Anthurium, Monstera, Syngonium, Dracaena, Maranta, Raphidophora, Diffenbachia, Philodendron, and Aglionema. So you cannot propagate any of those plants with just a leaf. You need a node that has an auxiliary bud or you can separate those plants as well. Then we have plants that can only be propagated by separation, which is kind of frustrating. And that includes palms, pisilis, bromeliads, calathea, phalaenopsis, alocasia, talansia, oncidiums, colocasia, homolomena, paphiopetalum, banana trees, Bulbophyllum, bird of paradise, and spider plants. So I hope that this kind of helps you understand propagation a little bit better, kind of gives you, you know, some extra things up your arsenal to be a better plant buyer and maybe be a better plant seller. I know that it's kind of difficult and some of you might go look at your plants right now and discover that a plant that you bought actually has a spent node. I'm really, really sorry about that, but I just think that it's really, really good to talk about this because literally no one told me about this. I did not know it was a thing. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that all of you guys know that it is a thing that can happen. You can have spent nodes that just won't ever grow again. Make sure that 
you are propagating your plants as correctly as possible. And yeah, but I wish you guys luck in your buying and propagating adventures. And I think that that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much to Chloe and Brianna for making those cool charts that are helping to educate people. You guys can go follow them on Instagram here and here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and actually tweet me at PlantMeAshley. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram at PlantMeAshley. I do a lot of fun Instagram content. Also, I have a membership service. If you are having a hard time making houseplant friends, come join our Discord server. Some of us have been there for over a year and a half, which is such a long time, but don't worry. It is not clicky. As soon as you join, you will be greeted by awesome, awesome houseplant parents. And we also have a buy-sell trade there, which which has usually pretty good prices. And we have, I don't know, we, have a, we do a bunch of stuff. We have, people are hanging out all the time in the voice chat lately, which is so awesome. I don't know, it's just so fun. Come join, it's only $5 a month and you gain access to an entire private community with tons of different benefits. Also, if you're wanting to support the channel just a little bit more, we do have other tiers which you can do. One of them is a $10 tier, which gets you on the end card you're about to see. Also, thank you so much for the extra channel support to the Planted Carly Flower, Terra Wolf Gang, all the green places and botanicas are all of the extra channel love and channel support but other than that guys thank you so much for watching i also do have merch i think it's cute i think it's cute uh you can also go view that at the drop down box but yeah thank you guys for watching this video and i'll see you in the next houseplant section propagate wisely and goodbye